Good morning, everybody. We're almost ready to begin. We're just letting a couple more people join us. And we'll get started in a couple minutes. While you're waiting, you can scan through and see your friends from your own school, from other schools. Wish we could all be together in person, but it's nice that we get to all see each other this way, so. people still joining us. Um, I'm getting a couple messages of people saying that you can't hear me. If you can hear me and you can see me can, and I can see you, can you give a thumbs up so we know that that's working okay? All right. Um, I will try to message with people and figure that out. We're almost ready to get going. I think we'll give people just another minute or two to to jump on. Okay, thank you for sending the messages saying you can hear me. All right, what do you think, Elsie? Should we um, get started? And if anybody keeps coming in, I can keep letting them in. Sure. Okay, good morning, everybody. My name is Elsie Crawford, and I want to welcome you to another Repairing Together program. Repairing Together is a program of the Milwaukee Jewish Day School. And for the past four years, we have been studying together with all of you of our partner schools, uh, mostly meeting in person at either the Urban Ecology Center, Discovery World, or Arts at Large. So this is a bit of a different year, and uh, we're trying something new to make it work. We learn uh, with and about each other. We learn about our community, our history. Um, we also learn to become friends and allies as we grow older. Last month, uh, we learned about Thanksgiving and the true story behind it. And this month, we learn about community organizing and how we can make our community a little better and a bit more just for everyone. We have uh, special speakers to help us think. And Ms. Sarah will now introduce the program and the speakers to us. All right, hi everybody. It's good to see you all. Um, so I, I think I know everybody, you've seen me before, but it's great to see you again. And um, I'm just gonna first go over some of our kind of agreements that we're gonna make together about how we're gonna be in the Zoom together. I know that you probably also have some agreements or expectations that you're used to from school. Um, so keep those in mind too, you know, we're still, um, participating as our own schools and also um, agreeing on some things together. So one thing is that if you are able to turn on your video, we would really love to see your faces and for your friends to be able to see your faces. You know, a lot of what we're, what we're doing here is getting to know each other, getting to be connected with each other. So if you can, could turn on your videos, we would love to see you. Um, so please keep, keep video on if possible. Um, 
as you can probably already tell, we have everybody, there's so many of us that we have everybody muted for now. It's not that we don't want to hear your voices, we really do, but um, it's, as you all know, from we're all getting pretty good at this Zoom thing, it can be tricky with so many people. Um, like right now we have 84 participants in this Zoom and, um, and some of those are even multiple people in one place. So we're going to keep everybody on mute um, until it's a time um, to unmute just so that we uh, don't have kind of people accidentally unmuting or talking over each other or things like that. Um, and the last um, ex and the last thing is just about the chat. So we, um, again, partly because we have so many of us, we do have the chat set so that you can send a chat, but it'll go to me only, or you know, to the organizers only, so, and the teachers. So if you have um, a question that you wanna ask to our speakers, we're gonna have time at the very end for them to answer questions. So you can type those questions there and we'll get to as many as we can. Or if you're having a tech, technology issue, you can send those in the chat. Um, but let's we're gonna keep the chat um, just connected to things to help us keep learning and sharing for today. Um, and I'm really excited to introduce you all to some friends of mine and some people who are um, doing really important work to uh, make this world the world that we all deserve, the world that um, you know we, we have folks from many different backgrounds and I think a lot of us um, can agree that we, uh, that in, from many different perspectives, want um, to live in a world that is just and fair for everybody. And um, these are folks who are really putting that into action. Um, and they're doing that as organizers with the Poor People's Campaign, um, National Call for Moral Revival. And I know that a lot of you have already watched a video and maybe done some more learning and discussing about the Poor People's Campaign. Um, and today is gonna be an opportunity for us to just learn more and learn from people who are really doing this um, right now where they live and around the country and even the world. So um, we're gonna first welcome Erica and she'll go ahead and introduce herself, but we're so lucky to have her here. So take it away, Erica. Hello everybody, how you doing? I am Erica Nansen. I'm so glad to be with you today. I am with the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for more revival. And one of the things that I do with the campaign is music. We have a team called Theo Musicology, and we really love to bring music and songs and chanting and energy to what we do because it's so a part of a history that we all share that actually brought this movement about. And um, we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. But first, I wanna introduce you guys to a little friend of mine who's gonna be helping me do some of this lesson. It is Power Bunny, okay? Hi, say hello to everybody, Power Bunny. And Power Bunny's new at this, so he's a little shy. So you guys gotta be nice, okay? Otherwise, he's not gonna do what he has to do. It's okay, Power Bunny, they're real nice. See, see them? Yeah, those are nice kids, see, say hi. So we're going to do a little bit of a song uh, first, and there's gonna be two songs. The first song, is going to be the original song from back in the civil rights movement. If you guys have learned anything about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., he led an incredible movement called the civil rights movement along with many others. And that is how the Poor People's Campaign came about. And they had so many great songs they would sing. They would march in the streets together and they would sing such beautiful songs that sounded like hymns. And yeah, it's true. It's true, Power Bunny. Power Bunny doesn't believe me, but we're gonna show Power Bunny. And so they had these incredible songs and we would, they would sing them together and bring so much energy. And so the campaign now has done the same thing. So we're gonna play an original version so you guys can see what it was like back then and hear that sound. And then we're gonna do the new version that the Poor People's Campaign came together and remixed a little bit and brought some of that newness to it. So just to make sure that this is really super fun, I actually have something for you, Power Bunny. Let's see. You wanna sign? You wanna sign? Okay. <laughs> this is a good sign. This is the song we're about to sing. Everybody's got a right to live. 
That's the name of the song. So let's get ready, you guys. Here's the original version. You can go ahead and play it there. All right, everybody, here comes the video. Oops, hold on. Went to the wrong thing, give me one sec. Thanks for your patience. <laughs> Power Bunny, don't laugh. <laughs> Power Bunny, be, be kind, <laughs> doing the best you can. All right, here we go. All right, can I get a thumbs up if y'all can see the video? Make sure it's working okay. Power Bunny, can you see it? Okay. New York City, a youth center in Astoria, Queens. To a presentation by Jim Collier on my right and Sir Patrick on my left. Uh, these two gentlemen have come down. Dr. King's two organizers here have found one unique way of reaching potential marchers for the campaign with their own songs about it. What they to do is uh, play some songs for you and then they're going to tell you about Dr. Martin Luther King's campaign to march on Washington with a number of poor people and to try to get the rights that the poor people in this country are entitled to. First song we'll do for you is everybody got a right to live. Don't you believe that? Everybody got a right to live. If Jesus died, we all might have a right to tree alive, didn't he? You know the history of it. You read the story. So we feel that everybody got a right to live. original 
And as you can see from that original song, it had so many of uh, the people from back then who were suffering and who were trying their best to, to stand up and fight against injustices and things that were just not right. So about the Poor People's Campaign, Dr. King and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., which many of us learn about in school, is most known for the Civil Rights Movement. That's right, the Civil Rights Movement. You want your sign back, PowerPoint? You want to sign back. So you guys can remember, everybody's got a right to live, right? And these signs are the types of signs that we hold up now, right? And we march in the streets. Is that how you march, Power Bunny? Yeah, Power Bunny doesn't play. Power Bunny marches strong when he's marching. And when we march in the streets together with our signs, give me the sign, Power Bunny. Thank you. <laughs> when we march together with our signs, we are representing a history. And that history is all the way back then. This is in the 50s and the 60s. And Dr. King was most known for fighting against racial injustice against African-Americans, Black people here in this country who couldn't sit at the same lunch counters as white people, who couldn't go to the same schools, and just facing that, that type of injustice. But then a time came where Dr. King had one, what was called the Voting Rights Act for Black people to have the right to vote in this country. Desegregation was happening where they were outlawing the practice of keeping Black and white students separated. But Dr. King looked around and he noticed something. It was poverty. And it was something about that poverty that was very, very specific. And it was that it wasn't just affecting Black people. It was something that was affecting people from all races and all backgrounds. And Dr. King made a statement that I think is so powerful. He said, what is the point of being able to eat at the same lunch counter if you can't afford a sandwich? Wow, right? And it's so true. We wanna be able to have equality, but what happens when you actually, you can technically go to the place but you're so poor, you can't afford to eat. And that's not right, right, Power Bunny? That's not right. So that's where the everybody has a right to live concept comes in, is that it's so important that we know everybody has a right to live, to food, to water, and these things. So the Poor People's Campaign, we came out with another version of this song. And uh, the song that, uh, oh, and, and I know there's some slides that I wanted to, show really quick too. Sarah has them up. Let's see, I'm gonna this two power bunny. Don't laugh at me. Power bunny, that is not nice. Um so we um there's a if you can pull one of those up for me, Sarah says which one? Oh I like that one. It's a good one. So what you guys are looking at is Dr. King here. And he's giving a very powerful speech. And there's a quote here. And that quote says, you know, whenever Pharaoh wanted to prolong the period of slavery in Egypt, he had a favorite formula for doing it. What was that? He kept the slaves fighting among themselves. But whenever the slaves get together, something happens in Pharaoh's court and he cannot hold the slaves in slavery. When the slaves get together, that's the beginning of getting out of slavery. And that is from Dr. King's final speech, been to the mountaintop, right before, unfortunately, he was, he was killed. Um, uh, can you bring up another, there you go. This is another powerful picture from that period of time. So you might see a sign in the background that says Welfare Rights Organization. So that's super important. That was actually a group of women who were fighting for uh, just income that were not able to get the income they needed to support their family. And so we always focus sometimes on Dr. King and some of the more known people, but there were so many everyday people, people just like you and me, who just decided to stand up for what was right, who made this movement. And this quote says, the fact is that capitalism was built on the exploitation and suffering of black slaves 
and continues to thrive on the exploitation of the poor, both black and white, both here and abroad. If Negroes and poor whites do not participate in the free flow of wealth within our economy, they will forever be poor, giving their energies, their talents, and their limited funds to the consumer market, but reaping few benefits in return. The way to end poverty is to end the exploitation of the poor. Thank you, Sarah. And this one is really, really good. So these are some of the folks from uh, organization uh, that was, uh, they were representing poor white folks. Because again, Dr. King realized that there was actually poor white people that were suffering too. It was, it was so many people. And even though there was so much racial tension because of the segregation and all of the things going on in the country, he realized there was a unity there that could happen between poor white people and poor black people and poor brown people and poor everyone. And this is a quote, it says, poor whites are here today to make ourselves visible to a society whose continued existence depends on the denial of our existence. We are here today, united with other races of poor people, Puerto Ricans, Mexican Americans, Indians, and Black people in a common cause. That common cause is freedom, and that is Peggy Terry. Chicago's Joint Community and Union of Day of Solidarity. That is powerful right there. And I love, and if you really look at that part where she says that, uh, it, it says that though it is based on, it says to make ourselves visible to a society whose continued existence depends on the denial of our existence. That is powerful, y'all that inequality and injustice is able to survive and live when we are have people who we get to pretend don't exist. When we have people who may not look like us or may not worship like us or may not have the same background as us, but they're suffering just like us. And that society can only continue. Like Dr. King said, when the slaves come together, that can only continue when those people stay separated or don't know each other exists. So this movement is about knowing that we all exist. I want you guys to say, I exist. Say, I exist. That's right. All right, next slide. And this one is a really nice picture. So this is called Resurrection City. When Dr. King did the Poor People's Campaign originally, and it was this huge encampment right on the Washington Mall. You can see in the background right there, uh, the, monu the Washington Monument. And so it was all these poor people coming together and they set up these tents right there on the lawn. I mean, smack dab on it in the middle of Washington, DC, just to make sure they knew that we were here, that we exist. And that was a planning of a huge march that was coming in a huge call for economic justice, which was the Poor People's Campaign. And this says, the only real revolutionary people say is a man who has nothing to lose. There are millions of poor people in this country who have very little or even nothing to lose. If they can be helped to take action together, they will do so with a freedom and a power that will be a new and unsettling force in our complacent national life. Beginning in the new year, we will be recruiting 3,000 of the poorest citizens from 10 different urban and rural areas to initiate and lead and sustain the massive direct action movement in Washington. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Poor People's Campaign, Nonviolent Social Chain, 1967. So on that note, that is the history that we stand on with the Poor People's Campaign. And I want you guys to hear the song that this new uh, unsettling force, this, this new wing, this new leg of Dr. King's dream uh, came together. You guys might notice me in the video um, there dancing a little bit, see if you can catch me in there. But um, I want you guys to pay attention because I want you guys to sing along to this one. This one is meant to sing along, so there's some instructions in the beginning. Listen very closely, Bunny, Reb, um, Power Bunny, where you at? There you go, show your ears. See, listen with your ears. 
and look with your eyes and, and sing along and clap along, okay? Go ahead, Sarah. Because this campaign is paying homage to the old and the new, we think about the then and the now of a movement. Um, we're bridging the gap between 1968 and 2018, which is 50 years of just revolution and 50 years of activism. Um, so we also incorporated a new part that incorporates um, hip hop, a little hip hop aspect to it. So they bring the old with the new. So when we get to that, we'll teach you how the words flow and go. So your words are first, everybody's got a right to live. And before this campaign fails, we'll all go down to jail. because Everybody has a right to live. You got that? That's All right. Um, and so then the second part uh, will be everybody's got a right to live. And then you all say to live. And then everybody's got a right to love. To love. To love. Everybody's got a right to dream. To, to dream. dream. Everybody's got a right to learn. To, to learn. learn. Got it? All right. Yeah. Everybody's got a right to live. and power bunny um so and if if you all want to learn more about that history of the original pork people's campaign and how it connects um to the campaign now we sent your teachers um some all, all kinds of stuff that you guys can can check out so ask them about that if you want to know more um and next we're going to hear from somebody right here in wisconsin so moses if you want to go ahead and and share a little bit yeah, hi everyone. I'm really excited to be here today. As Sarah said, my name is Moses. And as she said, I'm from Wisconsin, which is another reason that I'm really excited to be here today. Um, like you guys, I'm all in school. Um, my school is in New York, but I'm also doing online school. So I'm right here in Wisconsin right now, organizing in Wisconsin right now. Um, and so I guess the first thing I wanted to say is that I want you all to know right away that it's never too early um, and you're never too young to start fighting against things that make you sad or angry or confused. And it's never too early to learn uh, why things are making you sad or angry or confused. And I think one of the biggest regrets that I have is that I didn't start organizing earlier when I was in Wisconsin, when I was your guys' age and when I was in high school. And I wish that I started fighting for change in Wisconsin um, when I was your guys' age. And I wish that I had a program like this um, because I know now that everyone from every age brings something unique and amazing to the movement. And so um, that's just something that I really wanted to start with. But I've been organizing with the Wisconsin Poor People's Campaign for a little bit under a year now. And I wanted to talk a little bit today about one of the big actions that we did, which was we held something called a Medicaid March in Madison. Um, so for some context, there are people all over the um, country and uh, in this movement, so in people in Vermont, people in Pennsylvania, people in New York and California, 
who do a lot of amazing work surrounding healthcare. And um, it, it ranges. So even though um, some of it is from um, access to individual healthcare, but some of it is also um, deep, like uh, uprooting deep systemic systems that keep people from getting healthcare um, and uh, do stuff like uh, they fight against hospital closures and stuff like that. Um, and so there's a lot of really amazing work going on nationally. And so here in Wisconsin, um, we really started to do research into healthcare and what healthcare looked like in Wisconsin. And what we actually noticed was that many of us were facing similar issues, even though we all came from really different backgrounds. So there were people we talked to that didn't currently have a job. There were people that were like me that were students. And there were even people who were university professors who worked at universities. But we all had individual stories that were kind of the same or very similar about not being able to afford hospital bills, um, not being able to go to the doctor because it was too expensive, um, trying to figure out stuff about going to multiple hospitals or multiple doctors to kind of figure out complications from insurance companies. And we were really mad when we found out about this. And we knew that we had to do something about this and had to do something about how we were feeling. And so we wanted, and so with help from people, not only across Wisconsin, but across the country, we decided to join a movement and hold a march. And so, like I said, many of us were facing similar issues. And something that we also noticed was that the people facing the similar issues were all over the state. So even though some of us are based in Milwaukee and Madison, what we noticed when we talked about healthcare was that people in Wausau, La Crosse, Oconomowoc, Kenosha, Menominee Falls, Green Bay, every place that you can think of in Wisconsin were all facing similar issues. And we found out at the same time that during this pandemic right now that you know uh, is going on, that there were some people who were actually profiting from this. So who were profiting off of people dying, who are profiting off of people suffering. And so we wanted to be able to stand up and fight back and be able to tell our stories and be able to stand up for what we knew was right and what we believed in, which is that healthcare is a human right, no matter who you are and no matter where in Wisconsin or in the country that you're from. And so Sarah, if you're good, if you can all share, I'll show you guys some pictures from the march. Um, and so our march actually started in Madison where we stood outside of the Capitol and we called directly on politicians um, who were responsible for not getting us healthcare or not getting us relief pass packages, all stuff like that. You see my friend Rodney up there speaking. He does great organizing work in Madison. And so we were able to connect with him. You see my friend Reverend Colin up there who started with a prayer and an invocation of the day. Um, and also at this point when we were in the Capitol, we heard from Abigail who is a grocery store worker right here in Milwaukee. And we heard from Emma who's a college student just like me. And um, we heard about how they had similar experiences with trouble with healthcare. Emma was having really uh, difficult experiences with school and balancing that with her family's healthcare situation. And we heard from other people like Kevin, who's one of my really close friends from the Wisconsin Poor People's Campaign. And then you can go to the next slide. And so here's another photo. That's of Reverend Colin kind of giving an invocation. And you can see all the people who are coming together. And what was so special about it was that we invited a bunch of people. But while we were out there, some people just saw that what we were doing. And they just came up and joined us because they were mad about this too. And they wanted to make a change too. So some of those people we had never met before, but they saw what they were doing. And they decided to come join the march. And then you can go to the next one. And so from there, you can see me, I'm on the left, and then my really good friend, Reverend Dana, is on the right. We marched with the banner down the streets, and we marched down to WMC, or um, which is called the Wisconsin Manufacturers and Commerce. And like I said before, there were actually people who were making money um, during this pandemic, which is really sad. And so we wanted to call out some of those people directly. And two of the people that we called out were first someone called Epic Health IT. They do a lot of work with patient data. And the reason we called them out was because the person at the very top of the company was actually a billionaire who has a lot of money and they were actually making more money during this pandemic. And we also called out someone named Barada Properties here in Milwaukee and they're responsible for a lot of evictions, which is um, kind of definitely tied um, to like the healthcare system and stuff like that. And so if you go to the next one, um, so this is my friend, Reverend Dana. Reverend Dana was one of 
the people that we spoke and we were literally outside of the WMC building. It was really powerful. And so Reverend Dana spoke a little bit about her experience and navigating health insurance and her work with housing in Milwaukee. And then our friend Bruce, who's actually a nurse in Wausau, if you guys know where Wausau is, he spoke about his experience and how he's been affected by the pandemic and how his patients has been affected by the pandemic. And then you can go to the next one. And so what this march did more than anything is it showed that people across Wisconsin could come together as a unified force. One thing that people try really, really hard to do is to keep us apart from a bunch of different ways. And one of the really big ways that people try to do that in Wisconsin is they try to keep us apart based on geography. So they say that none of our problems are related to each other, that um, basically uh, what affects people in rural areas is nothing like how it affects people in cities. But what we notice, especially with healthcare, is that many of the problems that we faced were really similar. And if we stood up and unified together, we were a new and unsettling force, as we say in the campaign. And so I really just want to kind of show you guys how powerful this was and how powerful it is to really stand up for what you believe in and just the many people that you'll be able to meet and all the wonderful, amazing actions that you'll be able to do. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to watch one of the demand videos of the PPC. And this is for the national PPC. And this is a really powerful video. And it's actually one of my favorite videos of all time. And what I really especially love about this video is that um, it talks about and shows how many things in this country are a lot more interconnected than we think. In the campaign, we have what we call the five injustices, um, which is systemic racism, poverty, uh, ecological devastation, the war economy and militarism, and the distorted moral narrative of religious nationalism. And this video really does an amazing job of showing how interlocking these injustices are and showing what we as a cane are demanding. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. What happens in Wall Street often doesn't say a thing about what's happening on the real streets of America. The Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival, has come up with a series of demands. I know that you are here for the same reason we all are here, to put our elected officials on notice. The pain and the discontent is real, and the demands of our movement are moral. We know what we want to focus on. Our agenda is clear. We demand an immediate implementation of federal and state living wage laws. We demand, we demand the right for all workers, right for all workers to, form and join unions. to form and join unions. We demand, we demand equal, pay equal pay for equal work. For equal work. We, demand we demand a guaranteed annual income. Annual we, demand we demand fully funded, funded anti-poverty programs anti that protect the welfare of us all. We demand the expansion of Medicaid in every state. We want single payer university health care, not for some, but for everybody. of the Voting Rights Act. We demand an end to racist gerrymandering. We want early registration of 17 and 18 year olds. We want registration to vote at age 18. If we can be drafted for war at 18, we ought to be able to vote automatically at 18. Early voting in every state, same day registration, and the enactment of election day as a holiday. We demand a reversal of state laws that prevent municipalities from raising minimum wage. We demand an end to mass incarceration and the continuing inequalities of black, brown, and poor white people with the criminal justice system. We demand the right to vote for the formerly incarcerated. A clear and just immigration system. This includes providing a timely citizenship process that guarantees the right to vote. The First Nation, Native American, and Alaskan Native people retain their tribal recognition as a nation, not a race. We demand, we demand decent, decent housing. housing. We demand, we demand 
relief from crushing household student and consumer debt. We demand yeah. equity in education. We demand an end to the resegregation of schools. We demand yeah. free tuition at public colleges and universities and an end to profiteering on student debt. Equitable funding for historically black colleges and universities. We demand the repeal of the 2017 federal tax law. And we demand that the wealthy and corporations pay their fair share. We demand an end to military aggression and warmongering. We demand a stop to privatization of military budget and any increase in military spending. We demand a ban on assault rifles and a ban on the easy access of firearms. We demand an end to federal programs that send military equipment into local and state communities. We demand that the call to build a wall at the U.S.-Mexico border be ceased. We demand a ban on fracking, mountaintop removal, coal mining, coal ash ponds, and offshore drilling. We demand a ban on all new pipelines, refineries, and coal, oil, and gas export terminals. We are demanding that we stop the war on our poor. Somebody's hurting my brother, somebody's hurting our sisters, and it's gone on far too long, and we won't be silent anymore. We believe that we can win. We believe that we can win. We believe that everybody, everybody has a right All right, y'all. I hope you liked that video. Thank you, Moses, for sharing. Um, and next we have our friend Anu. Hi, everybody. Okay, so um, I know we got a little bit, little bit time left, so I'm gonna keep it tight, but hit you, you know, share the points of what I'm about to say. So my name is Anu Yadav. My full name is actually Anupama Singh Yadav, but you can call me Anu. And uh, my parents, they immigrated from India to the United States before I was born. And I'm an actress and I write plays. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about a housing, um, a, a group that was fighting for their right to housing. Um, I got involved, it was with a, a group of families that lived in a public housing project called Arthur Caper Carrollsburg in DC. And basically the government was gonna demolish their homes, kick everybody out and said, you can come back, but there was no plan for that. And so everybody knew that what they were really gonna do was create housing for wealthy people and kick all the poor people out. And so they knew it wasn't fair or right to do that we all have a right to a place to live. And so we all got together and we organized and fought really hard and won some victories, even though other things we didn't win and there was still more to go. But at that time, I really joined this fight thinking of myself as someone who wasn't impacted by the same things, but I was an ally and I wanted to help because I wasn't poor. Um, but then um, a few years later, I actually lost my housing and my health care and my income all at the same time. And I was homeless and um, I went to the people that I had organized with and, you know, they'd been through these situations and stuff. So it really helped me and my friends and my, my community, they became part of my community, really, really helped me through this time. And it was in that moment that I realized, wait a minute, I thought that I was fine when I was growing up, but when my dad died, I was about 12 and my mom raised me and my brother and was working at Burger King and um, 
you know, going to community college and we were in a really tough time and we were poor, but she never talked about it that way. So I didn't think that we were poor, but then when I realized the situations we had been through, I realized that the reason that I was joining this fight for other people wasn't because I was helping them. It was because I was, I was trying to do the thing that I wish we had had when I was growing up and that my family also deserves. And so I guess I just want to say that a lot of us sometimes, sometimes don't think we're poor, but really um, we're struggling and we all get to join together. So when I was working in the community, um, some of the young people um, were, we, we, there was a recreation center and the government was going to shut down that recreation center. And so it was the only place where young people could go to play and to have fun. And, and so the young people got really upset about it, understandably. And so they started making their own petitions. So there were kids as young as like six years old making petitions with crayons and paper. And it was all led by this one girl who was 11 years old at the time. And they got hundreds of signatures from everybody in the neighborhood. And we started working on this play to basically tell the director of the housing authority who was in charge to say, you cannot do this. We have a right to a place to live. We have a right to a recreation center. You cannot tear this down. And so they would call the director of the housing authority and he wouldn't talk to them, but they would leave messages with the secretary. And so they'd be, you know, just practicing essentially, okay, how do you talk to people in power and tell them this is what we are demanding and what we need. And so this really motivated a lot of the adults, you know, who sometimes, you know, people, adults don't take young people seriously and that's, that's not right. And everybody has really good thinking. And just because you might be young or older, it, it doesn't mean you can't be a leader in this movement. You can. And so they came up with this song and they presented it. They wanted to present it to Mr. Kelly, the director, and he was coming to a community meeting. So basically they um, went to the community meeting. They got, we, we, we did, got locked out because the adults got so scared of what the kids had to say and then waited in the rain. And when the director came out, presented him with this song. And so um, I'm gonna share it with you, but I will say that um, it was because of the young people in the neighborhood that um, the rec center got saved before people started moving out. Like it, it everything did get demolished, but not, they wanted to demolish it before everybody left. And so they saved that part. And then, you know, there's an ongoing fight and there's a bigger fight and we all get to do that together. But it was because of young people that the rec center did not get demolished in the time that the government wanted it to. So everybody's very powerful. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna really very briefly share with you this song. And so um, I'll just write, write it in the chat. It goes, Mr. Kelly, we say no. We won't let our community go. Step, step, clap, clap, step, clap. We won't leave without a fight. Arthur Capper, yeah, that's right. And so I'm gonna just say that very briefly, we'll take two minutes to do this. If you want to, because how many of you are like on Zoom a lot? How many of you have been sitting a lot? Sometimes our bodies are like, are we alive? I'm just sitting, I'm not, I don't know what's happening. So I want you to, if you would like to, to get up right now so your body can know that you are alive and you got legs and arms and the limbs and stuff. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this dance. So I'm gonna teach it to you. So it goes like you step with one, step with the other, two claps and two, so step, step, clap, clap, step, clap. Step, step, clap, clap, step, clap. So step one foot, one foot, two claps, one foot. Got it? So it goes step, step, clap, clap, step, clap, step, step, clap, clap, step, clap. Ready? Step, step, clap, clap, step, clap, step, step, clap, clap, step, clap. So what we'll do is we'll do the song and I'll say one thing, then you repeat it back and we'll do the dance and here we go. Clap, 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 clap
Mr. Kelly, we say no. Mr. Kelly, we say no. Step, step, clap, clap, step, clap. We won't let our community go. We won't let our community go. Step, step, clap, clap, step, clap. We won't leave without a fight. We won't leave without a fight. Step, step, clap, clap, step, clap. Arthur Kemper, yeah, that's right. Arthur Kemper, yeah, that's right. Step, step, clap, clap. Step, clap, one more time. Step, step, clap, clap, step, clap, step, step, clap, clap, step, clap. Step, clap. <sighs> I haven't really taught that before, so I'm not sure how that went. <laughs> You'll have to let me know. <laughs> how about it, everybody? <laughs> it's great to get to move around a little bit. I hope you all, all give it a try. Um, all right, so we are going to hear a little bit now again from uh, from Miss Erica and Power Bunny. Um, just, we are a little bit shorter on time, Erica. So if you do five minutes, then we'll still have five minutes left to, so we can get to some of the questions that people had, had put out there. No problem, no problem. So, so, so good to be back, you guys. Um, I wanna show you guys, I just wanna go right into it um, and show you guys a picture. Um, you can pull up that for me, Sarah. There we go. So what you all are looking at is a library, but it's not what you think. It's actually a public high school library. This is in California in a place called Palo Alto. It is a very wealthy area. Um, the average income, I believe, when you take the poorest, poorest, poorest person to the richest, richest, richest person, it's like $170,000 a year, which is a lot of money for most people. Um, and it, this is what their public school, high school library looks like. Show the other one for me, Sarah. I mean, it's really nice. No one can argue that this is a nice library. It actually reminds me of me growing up. I actually lived in a really poor neighborhood, but then I, my mom moved us. She worked three jobs so that I could go to a school kind of like this one. She wanted me to have the right zip code so that I could have a library like this, but she fell on hard times and she couldn't really keep up with things. So I had to move back to my old neighborhood with my grandmother, who's from the Caribbean, and uh, go back to my old school, who didn't have much at all. So here in Chicago, the neighborhood I live in is very similar to the one that I had to move back to that didn't have much. Can you show the next slide, sir? This is a picture of some of the students that I know uh, that I worked with here in Chicago who were standing up to have to fight against their librarians being their librarians being fired and their libraries being closed. Now I want you guys to compare that to what you just saw with the Palo Alto High School. Can you flip it back again for me, Sarah? This is their library, public school, same age as those other kids, nothing else. But then look at these kids in my neighborhood. They are having to protest in the middle of the school day and do a sit-in to get the people in authority to see that they deserve to even have a library, to even have a library. And that is what I wanna to talk to you guys about really quick again, uh, to pick that up, is injustice. Power Bunny is gonna be injustice today, okay? And I'm gonna to demonstrate to you why things like this happen. So what you just saw with the schools is based on a concept of paying for public schools based on what are called property taxes. Basically it's the taxes you pay for the kind of house you have. The problem with that is some people have humongous houses and some people have tiny, tiny houses that, are, don't, that aren't worth much money at all. So if you're paying on those houses and, you, and that's what's going to the schools, it's gonna be unequal. And that, that's an example of policy that are part of our government's decisions that decide things like that. Um, so if I wanted to you know, make another sign, Power Bunny has all these markers and I have this pencil, okay? I represent us, just regular you and me, right? So I could do something with this pencil. It has potential, but look at this. It's not sharpened, y'all, and I don't have a sharpener. I need to do something. So you know what I'm gonna do? Do you have a sharpener, Power Bunny? No, okay. Um, what about, can I borrow one of your pencils or pens? No, but you have so many. 
you have a marker, a pen, a pencil, you have all of that and, and you won't even let me have any of this, no? Okay, well then what, what else can I do? I, I mean, I, you have that, let me see what else. You're gonna help me out, okay, what else? Hold on a minute, you have a whole bag of markers, Power Bunny, and you will not share with me? <laughs> oh my goodness. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is just a quick example of how injustice works. It is when so many people have more than enough. I mean, so much that it's ridiculous. You can't even write with all this at the same time. And so many people have so little and they're suffering and they're dying and it's not right. And it doesn't have to be that way. And so that's the lesson that I really want you guys to take from that. Thank you. Let's thank Power Bunny for demonstrating. He didn't like being in justice, made him sad. So thank you, Power Bunny. And um, I think we can go into some questions. Thank you all so much. This is so awesome to get to hear all of your stories and um, for sharing with us about the Poor People's Campaign and this work to end this in, to end injustice. So um, students, you all posted some really awesome connections and questions on those padlets that we did. So um, I'm gonna share some of the questions right now with our speakers and speakers just feel free to um, jump in if you wanna answer one of these questions. So our first question comes from a third grader at Bruce Guadalupe Community School. And this student asked, what is poverty? It's a great question, really important one. Who wants to answer that question? Just come on off mute speakers and you can, if you wanna give that one a shot. You wanna take that one or? Well, I'll, okay, I'll say something. Um, what I think poverty is, is that when we don't have the things that we need to live, like food or healthcare when we're sick or housing when we need it, um, or, um, or where, we're, where we're really struggling for it, you know? Yeah, I don't know, Moses or Erica, what would you say poverty is? Let's say poverty is when you have to worry about basic human needs, when that is on the forefront of your mind, food, water, shelter, things that you need not so that you don't die. When you have to worry about things that you need so you don't die, that are normal needs and, and you don't have them, that's poverty. When you have to be concerned you're gonna lose those things um, easily, you know, but just one accident, one person, one parent loses a job, one tire pops on the car, um, just the slightest little thing goes wrong, you lose it all. That's poverty. All right, our next question comes from a fourth grader at Milwaukee Jewish Day School. Why are there so many poor people in such a rich country? I think I'll take that one. It's because of greed, 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 greed. So much greed. Um, it is because we are in a system that unfortunately puts making money over helping people. And it kind of is one of those things where we, we praise people for having a lot of money and we make that such a big, big thing, but not really looking at how they got all that money. Did they hurt people? Did they take things from people? Did they make it harder for other people to survive? Um, and it's not really looked like that. So we end up having a system that rewards getting lots and lots of money, even if you hurt people doing it. And a lot of people are being hurt by a system that rewards them. So that's one of the reasons. Yeah, and I think another thing is um, our money goes like, for example, the military gets a lot of money and like a lot of money, like billions of dollars. And also, um, it's definitely kind of as Erica said, like, just for an example, like the three most wealthy people in the United States have a lot more money than I think it's the bottom 50%. Um, or might be more than that. And so um, definitely that's kind of another thing is greed and also our money, it goes to places like the military and stuff like that. 
All right, another question is from uh, a fifth grader from Indian Community School. Why did they arrest people when they were trying to help in the videos? And in the song, it, and I'll just add to that, in the song it talks about, we'll all go down to, to jail. So that, that does sound a little different. So maybe you guys could talk a little bit about what that means or why that happens. Power Bunny is going to answer this one. <laughs> Injustice is why that happened because we are in a system that unfortunately it is um, set up uh, in a way that punishes people for resisting injustice. It, it, because it wants to keep it that way. Um, because it's profiting off it, it's making money off of it. It, you know, think about back in slavery times, you know, we all know slavery was a very bad thing, but it made people a lot of money, a lot, a lot of money. And so they wanted to keep making that money. It's the same thing. When you stand up against something that people are getting something from, they try to stop you. And that's called injustice, right, Carbon? We're almost out of time. So, and you know, I'll just, I'll add that, um, you know, sometimes, there are rules that are unfair. And what we saw in the video is people deciding to break rules that they thought were unfair, um, not because they wanna break the rules, but because they know that the rules aren't fair to begin with. And um, that's called civil disobedience. And that's something that um, happens in the poor people's campaign sometimes. Um, there's one more question that came from all the different grades and all the different schools asked kind of different versions of this question. So this will be our last question. And then we're gonna do one little send off that will just take a second. So teachers and students hang in there, we're almost done. But the last question, like I said, that came from all the different schools, all the different grade levels were things like, I wonder how we can help. How can we help? What can we do? And I'm so proud of all of you that that, that question came up, you know, with so many different people. So does anybody wanna say anything about that? I think, I don't know. Well, I'll just say getting to talk with other, young people and other people in your community about what are the things you're upset about? What do you think the things are that are not right? And getting to talk to each other about it and maybe research about it. Like I, this thing that I wrote, billionaires got $637 billion during the pandemic. But why is it that we don't have the things that we need? That's not right. So what are the things that we need? And let's, let's figure out what we can do about it together because the people that are facing it, all of us, we're the experts in our own experience. So when we get together, we can make change. Awesome. All right, Erica, do you wanna help us finish up here? Yes, I'll take it. And there was actually one other question I saw in the chat that was asked, how old is Power Bunny? <laughs> <laughs> um, Power Bunny is a first grader. <laughs> so with so that, Power Bunny. <laughs> so let's give let's give Power Bunny a round of applause. This is the first time. Yay! Thank you. So we're gonna end with a chant that we do on the Poor People's Campaign when we're marching together and we're feeling that power together. And we're all standing together, no matter where we come from, no matter what color we are, no matter how we worship no matter where we live, no, no matter our age, and we all come together in that street together and we say this chant. And it goes like this. It says, forward together, not one step back. All right, so when I say forward together, you guys say, not one step back, all right? Forward together. Not, not one step back. <laughs> All right, thank you all so much. We will um, see you next time. Next month, we'll have another program with Repairing Together. And let's give a, a round of applause and a big thank you to our speakers for joining us this morning. Thank you. Great to be with you all together. Thank you, Sarah.